This is one of my very favorite banknotes from my collection, the 45 Kyat banknote from Burma, a country also known as Myanmar. I'll get to that in a moment. So serious banknote collectors watching this will likely not be too impressed by the condition of this note. It's certainly not the sort of mint condition, usually referred to as uncirculated, which most collectors prefer. But this banknote is special because I didn't buy it from a dealer online. I actually received it myself when I changed money in Burma in the late 1990s, on the black market no less. <laughs> At the time, there were very few 45 cat banknotes left in circulation, so it was sheer luck that I was given one. They were first issued in 1987, and most of them had fallen apart through wear and tear by the time of my visit. But this is arguably not the weirdest banknote denomination ever produced by the Burmese government. Also vying for that title are the 15 cat, 35 cat, 75 cat, and 90 cat notes. And, believe it or not, a few of these oddly denominated banknotes actually provided the spark for the 1988 pro-democracy demonstrations, which led to Burma holding its first multi-party elections for decades. So these banknotes aren't just a curiosity. They played a critical role in one of the most important moments of Burma's history for the last hundred years. Hi, I'm Fredo Rockwell, and welcome to another edition of Strange Money. If you like this video and want to see more like it, or have suggestions for topics I could cover in future, just let me know in the comments. And of course, be sure to subscribe to see more videos like this one. Honestly, I'd be your best friend if you did. You know, seriously, best friends. So in today's video, I'm going to cover three things. My personal experience with banknotes and money in Burma. We will have a look at some of the banknotes themselves. And lastly, I will explain how some of these banknotes led to a popular uprising which, even in recent weeks, is still having repercussions today. But first, let's have a very brief introduction to Burma itself, just so all this makes sense. Burma is located in Southeast Asia, between Thailand and Bangladesh, and became a British colony in 1824. After much struggle, the country achieved independence in 1948, but democracy did not last long, and in 1962, a coup led by General Ne Win started what has been, except for a few brief intermissions, 60 years of continuous military dictatorship. And regarding the country's name, in 1989, the military government officially changed it from Burma to Myanmar. Burma was the country's name as a British colony, and they argued it was time to use a more accurate one. But because the change was imposed by the military dictatorship, Many people and organizations around the world still prefer to use the name Burma. And personally, this is the name I'm most comfortable with myself. Okay, so the very first Burmese banknote I encountered on my visit was not the 45 cat. It was this very odd specimen, which is known as a Foreign Exchange Certificate, or FEC. They are no longer in use, so I hear, but were at the time a way for military leaders to ensure they got some hard currency out of visiting tourists. One FEC was equal to exactly one dollar, and at least at the time I visited Burma, every foreign visitor was required to exchange at least three hundred dollars into FECs before you were allowed to enter the country. And you might be wondering how this was enforced. In the first arrival hallway at Rangoon Airport, there was a desk where everyone had to change their money into FECs, and if you skipped it, the border guards at passport control wouldn't let you into the country. And I know this is the case because a German guy ahead of me tried this and got into a big argument before sheepishly getting in line behind me to get his FECs. So this banknote is weird. Overall, it's fairly plain, but there's some really interesting detail on the left here showing a gnat, which is a type of spirit which is important in Burmese Buddhism. And you find statues of gnats around most religious sites. On the top right corner, there is what looks like an incomplete circle, but that is in fact a one in Burmese numerals. I'll talk more about these in a moment. But the back of this banknote is mostly text, uh, but the text that's here is really odd. It says, this certificate can only be used within the Union of Myanmar and is convertible. No claim on any loss whatsoever of the certificate will be considered by the Central Bank of Myanmar. And I don't think I've ever seen anything like that on any other banknote before. I mean, is there anywhere in the world where people make claims to a central bank if, if they lose a banknote? Also, the paper it's made of feels really weird. It's much more like normal paper, and certainly doesn't have the parchment feel other Burmese banknotes do. There are UV-sensitive fibers embedded in it, but otherwise, no security features. There were other denominations of FECs, a 5, a 10, and a 20, 
but the only one I kept for a souvenir was this one FEC note. So I got my 300 FECs and got my passport stamped. Here's my entry visa, just in case that's of interest to anyone. The way FECs were supposed to work is that, as a foreigner, I was meant to only use FECs for most things, like staying in hotels and the entry fees for government-run tourist attractions. If I wanted to make a purchase using CAT, say if I wanted to buy something in a local market, I was supposed to convert FECs at an official exchange rate, which at the time was about six and a half CATs to the dollar. In reality, what almost every foreigner actually did was exchange their FECs on the black market, where the exchange rate was about 10 times as high. At least, that's what every foreigner I met did. In fact, when I checked into my hotel, the receptionist gave me instructions on where to find black market money changers and what sort of rate to expect. Now, I don't want to give the impression that I'm some sort of swashbuckling adventurer pirate kind of guy who regularly delves into black markets on a regular basis. There are a few countries I've visited where this is the norm, but I'd be lying if I said this process didn't make me really nervous. Anyway, there were a few guys standing around in a certain spot in a nearby market. They counted out the cap banknotes from these huge bundles of cash they had in their pockets. I think I changed about $100 in FECs, and that was that. The cap banknotes I received were pretty hard to wrap my head around, if I'm honest. They were in all shapes and sizes. I mean, well, all sizes. I guess they're all the same shape. Um, and the Burmese numbers can be really confusing. Say, for example, the 45 in Burmese numbers on this banknote looks a lot like a 90 in Hindu Arabic numerals, at least to me. And here, just in case you're interested, are the Burmese numerals. They work just like the numbers you're probably used to, but with different symbols for each value. So anyway, I used cats pretty much exclusively during my four weeks in Burma, which made everything much cheaper. There was one really remote hotel I visited which insisted I pay with FECs, and that ended up being a lot more expensive than other hotels I stayed in, even though it really wasn't a very nice place at all. There were tourist spots where officials would try to collect entry fees and FECs from foreigners, most notably the Shwedagam Pagoda, which is amazing, one of the most fascinating places I've ever been. To get to the pagoda, you had to climb a very long flight of steps. It took 10 minutes or so to get to the top. Along the way, there were fortune tellers, souvenir stands, and food kiosks. And about halfway up, there was a desk for foreigners to pay admission. Usually, this desk was unmanned, so we would all just ignore it. On a couple of occasions I visited, there were government officials there. But rather than pay 20 FECs or whatever the amount was, I would just turn around and visit another time. So let's look at some cat banknotes. First of all, there are the more normal banknotes I saved from my trip. These are all from the series of cat notes which began being issued in the 1990s and are still in use today. This isn't a complete set, but as you can see, the layout is very similar from note to note. The main feature on the obverse of each is a chin fe, which I'm going to admit I cannot pronounce correctly. According to Google Translate, the word is pronounced chin fe, which I've tried to learn to say properly, and I have failed miserably. A is a mystical lion creature, which is part of the Burmese Buddhist tradition, and statues of Chinthe can be seen flanking the entrances to most Burmese temples. These notes vary a lot in size. This 200 cat note must be nearly twice the size of the 5 cat note in terms of surface area. And again, these banknotes show the really interesting Burmese alphabet and numbers. The reverse of each note shows scenes of Burmese life, the five shows a game of cane ball, which is a sort of Southeast Asian hacky sack game played in a circle with a ball made out of cane strips. The 10 shows a royal barge. The 20 shows a famous fountain from a park in Rangoon. And the 200 shows an elephant dragging a teak log. The 200 has one curious symbol on it, a pentagram on the front and back. I've tried to figure out what it means, but so far I've come up short. There is a watermark of the on each note as well as UV-sensitive fibers, and on some notes, but not all, there are also UV-sensitive security strips. One thing that's curious about these notes, there are no portraits of famous people or historical events on them. And as a result of that, I think, despite these notes being full of interesting patterns and symbols, I can't help but find them a bit bland. I feel sort of guilty saying that because, on one level, they're really interesting. But yeah, kind of bland. There are also no signatures from an issuing authority, like you see on most banknotes, or, or dates, which is weird. All of this blandness dovetails nicely with my impression of the military dictatorship during my time in Burma. In most dictatorships you visit, you regularly see portraits of the dear leader everywhere, like President Salah in Yemen, 
or Daniel Arup Moy in Kenya. Honestly, everywhere. But I don't remember ever seeing pictures of the rulers in Burma, or even knowing their names. They seemed happy to remain anonymous for whatever reason, and these banknotes are perhaps a reflection of that. Much more interesting, however, are the banknotes from an earlier series, which were issued in the 1970s and 80s. Notably, these all feature people, well, mostly one person, General Aung San, who appears on all of the notes in this series, with a few exceptions. Aung San, in case you didn't know, was the main leader of the Burmese people during the push for independence from Britain. He is considered to be the father of the nation, much like George Washington is for Americans. Tragically, he was assassinated a mere six months before his dream of an independent Burma was realized. And if his name sounds familiar, Aung San's daughter, Su Chi, commonly known as Aung San Su Chi, is the leader of Burma's most popular political party, the National League for Democracy, and is the most prominent opponent of the military dictatorship. What's really interesting about these banknotes featuring Aung San is the way the portraits are completely different from note to note. In my collection, I have 15 cat and 35 cat banknotes which feature Aung San in military dress. He was the founder of the Burmese military, after all, and the 75 cat banknote, which shows him sporting a traditional Burmese headdress called a gong ban, which again, I can't say. The right way is gong ban. These notes have watermarks with the corresponding portraits of Aung San, plus the same UV-sensitive features I mentioned before. Oh, and just to avoid any confusion here, I, I purchased these banknotes, along with the 90 cat I will show you shortly from a dealer online. They're not from my travels. So regarding the denomination of these banknotes, these are extremely unusual for any currency anywhere in the world. There was once a 15 ruble note in the early days of Soviet Russia, and there were several 75 Fennig Notgeld notes from Germany back before World War II. And by the way, Half Asleep Chris has a great video about Notgeld banknotes if you're interested. But this is the only banknote ever in the history of the world with a 35 denomination, at least as far as I can tell, which is pretty cool. On the reverse of each note is a statue of a figure from Burmese religion and folklore. On the 15 is a statue of a Zwagi, which is a person who practices a sort of alchemy in order to obtain long life so that they can live to see the coming of the next Buddha. On the 35 note is a gnat, the traditional Burmese spirit, and on the 75 is a statue of a specific gnat known as Lao Kat Nat, who is always described as a peacemaker. And in every picture I've ever seen of Lao Kat Nat, he has these really long fingers which are pointed up and bent backwards. You'll notice that all three of these banknotes are issued by the Union of Burma Bank, whereas the previous ones were issued by the Central Bank of Myanmar, as they were issued after the official name change of the country. Now then, these 35 and 75 cat banknotes, along with the 25 cat banknote, which I don't have in my collection, but here's a picture, were suddenly withdrawn by the government without warning on September 5, 1987, and that caused utter chaos. When I visited Burma, it was still largely a cash society, and it probably is today, I suspect. And what I mean by this is that most people, especially poorer people, store their savings in physical banknotes, not bank accounts. So for those people, with roughly half the banknotes in circulation suddenly rendered useless, it was a huge problem. Businesses went bankrupt, and anyone who had been saving up money for a big expenditure suddenly found themselves with a sizable shortfall. One group most affected by this were university students who were, as a group, on the verge of making their annual tuition payments, and most students have been saving up cash for this payment. A riot broke out among students at the Rangoon Institute of Technology, and universities nationwide were shut. When they reopened in October, students began organizing a new democracy movement, which led to more protests, and the head of the military dictatorship, General Ne Win, was toppled. The protests continued, however, culminating in a nationwide general strike on the 8th of August, 1988. And thanks to that day, the entire series of events is now known as the 8888 Uprising. I've read several conflicting accounts about which banknotes were withdrawn in September of 1987, and so I contacted a friend in Burma and asked him to give me his story. According to him, it was those three unusual denominations which were withdrawn, the 25, the 35, and the 75 kyat banknotes. Some accounts say the 100 was also withdrawn, but that's not true according to my friend in Rangoon. Then, later in September, the government introduced two even odder denominations, the 45 cat banknote I showed before and the 90 cat banknote. Again, these are the only two banknotes of these denominations ever issued anywhere in the world. 
at least as far as I can tell. Supposedly, these unusual numbers were chosen because they are both divisible by nine, and General Ne Win was, by reputation, a very superstitious person and appears to have thought this was a good idea for some reason. I actually heard this explanation for these odd notes when I was in Burma, and I came across the story several times in my research for this video. When it comes to doing really odd things without explanation, possibly for superstitious reasons, General Ne Win had form. In 1970, he suddenly announced cars had to switch from driving on the left side of the road to driving on the right. According to multiple accounts, Ne Win made this decision either following the advice of his astrologer or after having a dream. During my visit, nearly 30 years later, there were still arrows along the roads to show which side was the right side to drive on. Anyway, these two new banknotes did not feature Aung San. The 45 cat note has a portrait of Takin Po Ka Gi, a labor leader from the oil sector who was active in the resistance to British rule in the 1930s and has a picture of oil workers on the reverse. The 90 cat note features Saya San, who led several uprisings, also in the 1930s, and on the reverse shows traditional agricultural scenes. Both of these notes have similar portraits for watermarks, plus the same security features as the other Burmese banknotes I've shown previously. I really like all these very odd denominated banknotes, not just because of the unusual numbers. The portraits are all very striking, and they just hold my attention in a way the current series with the chintes do not. And so that's my story of Burmese banknotes, or at least the story of the ones in my personal collection. But there are two more things about Burma, which I have to mention before signing off. One is that I met a lot of amazing people during my stay there, in particular two brothers in the hill town of Pianu Lin, east of Mandalay. I was introduced to them by a fellow American I had met, and they were extremely kind, reliable, generous people who were curious about the world and great fun to get to know. They were both Muslim and may have been part of the Rohingya minority group, the largest Muslim minority in Burma. If so, it is entirely possible they were both killed or forced into refugee camps across the border in Bangladesh by the Burmese government following a series of genocidal attacks on this minority group. I have no way of knowing but just the thought of this makes me very sad. And it is especially heartbreaking that Aung San Suu Kyi, who had been considered a hero by so many people for decades, defended the government's mass slaughter and deportation of the Rohingya people. And while I was researching this video, the Burmese military staged yet another coup following a very strong showing for the National League for Democracy in the most recent elections. My correspondent in Rangoon even struggled to send me information briefly after the regime cut off the internet for a day. Aung San Suu Kyi and other party leaders have been detained on trumped-up charges, and just this morning there were reports of mass deportations denouncing the coup. So, sorry to end this video on a downer, but things are and have been tough in Burma for a long time. Let's all hope that things get much better sometime soon. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think of the banknotes I showed and if you knew that they had sparked Burma's pro-democracy movement. And of course, I'd love it if you subscribe to see more videos like this in future. See you in the next video.